In this video, I'm gonna briefly explain to you what side chaining is and how to do it inside FL Studio. Let's get straight into it. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. If you're new to the channel, I do do a lot of FL Studio related tutorials, specifically a lot of sound design stuff within stock FL Studio plugins. Plus I have a bunch of just regular production tutorials on here as well. So check that stuff out if you're interested. If you don't know, side chaining or side chain compression is the process of essentially eliminating one particular element of your mix to make room for another part. A good example of this is a kick and a sub bass, which can be fighting for similar frequencies there's not really a whole lot of room down there in the sub regions of your mix. So that's where side chaining comes in and we actually duck out or eliminate the sub every time the kick hits so that the kick can punch through the mix harder and also take up less headroom in your mix. Now in certain genres like EDM, for example, uh, side chaining goes beyond just this example and it's actually more of an aesthetic thing and can be used in more of a creative way where you might side chain synths, you might side chain white noise, and it's done more to give it this sort of pumping sound or to just make tons of room for the kick to really punch through the mix. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into FL Studio and I'll show you how to do it inside FL Studio. All right, so I'm here inside FL Studio 20. It really doesn't matter if you're using FL Studio 20 or an older version, it's gonna be the same process no matter what. And there are actually many different ways to sidechain inside FL Studio. A very common way to do sidechain compression is with an actual compressor. But the technique that I'm gonna be showing you in today's tutorial is actually a little bit different. I'm actually going to be just using volume automation to achieve the same process that you would with a compressor. So I've got this little beat that I'm working on right now, and I wanna go ahead and show you what it sounds like like before side chaining and after side chaining. And then I'm gonna show you how to actually side chain. So let's take a listen. Right now, this section right here is before any side chaining. So there's no side chain compression going on. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool. But as I mentioned in the intro, I really want the kick and the sub to not compete with each other. I wanna go ahead and cut the sub out every time the kick hits. And what I've actually done here is I've done the same thing with the pads too. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, the pads aren't necessarily a requirement for mixing. They're taking up a different frequency spectrum than the kick. So this is more of an artistic choice because I like the way it sounds and I want this sort of pumping sound or swelling in and out. You'll hear what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and take a listen. So you can really hear the difference there. This is a pretty heavy side chain and you can really hear it kind of breathes life into this. It, it makes it have this movement and this, this pumping sensation. All right, so first things first, uh, what I wanna do is go ahead and make sure that my sub or whatever instrument that I'm gonna be side chaining to the kick is linked into a free mixer track or rooted to the mixer. So in our case, uh, our sub, is this instrument here, it's a helm. And so I can route it to a free mixer track by linking it via this option up here, or I can just go into my plugin options and go to route to free mixer track this way. You can also hit control L. And then once you have it routed to a free mixer track, here it is here. Uh, excuse me for this project being super unorganized. I actually highly recommend that you get in the habit of getting organized as much as possible. I obviously am not following my own advice with this, but we have our helm here. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add a fruity balance. So I've already done this here, but I'm gonna mute this and I'm gonna do it again. So in a new slot, an open slot, uh, let's go ahead and go to select and we'll go to fruity balance. So our fruity balance is basically a balance between left and right. So you can pan stuff left or right. And then it also has a volume knob. And so what I wanna do here is automate this volume knob to the kick. So what I'm gonna do here is actually go in, find find my kick, kind of zoom in a little bit here, and I'm gonna highlight just an area of the kick, so probably about that much, you can maybe go that much. And then I'm gonna go back into my mixer, and once again, I'm gonna go back into my Fruity Balance, and I'm going to right click on this, go down to Create Automation Clip, and then the automation clip shows up here on the playlist, and now I can shape this automation clip to the shape of this kick sample here. So I can drag this up to get it closer, zoom in even more if I want to. And what I like to do is right click to create a new point and then always make sure that your automation clip is going back up to the same volume that it was previously at the end. So that's why I like to right click to add new points instead of messing with the points that are already there. Uh, so then I'll add another point here and then I can alt and click to drag it off the grid a little bit and I can kind of 
shape this to the way that the kick looks. And so then I can maybe bring this up a little bit here, kind of do like this this number. Um, you can you can get as exact with this method as you want. It's part of the reason why I prefer this method as opposed to using a, a compressor because you actually get some visual feedback. So once you've created a, a shape that's pretty good, then what I like to do is drag this on top of the sub. This is just where I've gotten in the habit of putting my automation clips. So when I export stems, everything is gonna be exporting properly. I could actually also right click here, insert a new place, bring this down, and then I could group with the track above. And this is sort of another way of doing your automation clips and having them grouped together like this. So the next thing that I do is I go ahead and unhighlight that, and then I just copy and paste this every time the kick hits. Uh, sometimes it can be helpful to kind of bring this up above the kick a little bit while you paint this in. So I'm just gonna do um, every time the kick hits on the on every beat of the measure. And then once you've done a number of those, we can go ahead and highlight these by hitting Control and then clicking and highlighting the, everything. And then if you hit Shift, you can drag this stuff over. This is sort of a, a quick copy and paste. And we can just continue to do this over and over again until we've done enough side chain. And once I've completed that, then I can highlight everything and once again, bring it back down on top of that sub. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and mute these pads and we'll go ahead and take a look and listen to what this sounds like here. So it's not super easy to tell what's actually going on. Uh, that's actually kind of the point of doing this method is that we create a shape where you can't really tell that the sub's cutting out when the kick hits. But we can repeat this process for all of our synths, all of our pads. And then if you wanna just create one fruity balance and then link everything to it, sort of like a bus, uh, you could also do that. Basically, we just come into a free slot here and then we could put a fruity balance here. We can rename this let's name it side chain. And then we can route any instruments to this side chain. So for example, this, I already have this instrument actually rooted to something else, but let's say I wanted to route this to this and this to that. So I've got this highlighted and I can go ahead and right click this and just go to root to this track only. So now I've got this one rooted to this track only. And then I can do the same here. I've got my serum, I'm gonna root it to this track only. And then I can create this fruity balance basically just one automation clip all within the mixer just by rooting things together. Now, one caveat to how I like to do this is that uh, when I load up samples, I load them directly into the playlist like this. And whenever you do that, it creates an audio sample, which allows us to see the actual waveform of what's going on with this sample. So let's say that you work within the channel rack, which I know a lot of producers do. And let's just say um, that we have a kick going on here, it's MIDI. Okay, so this is our new kick here and we just basically have a little pattern going on. And what I wanna do is I wanna sidechain my 808 or my sub to this new kick that I've created, but there's no waveform. So if you want to turn your MIDI into audio so that you can see the waveform, kinda of how I showed you in the first example, uh, then we can just right click, make sure you're in your MIDI pattern here. We can just right click this. We can do a quick render as audio clip. That'll create an audio clip, which will show up here in our audio section and you can just drag this over. And now we have our waveform showing up here and we can side chain to it as I showed you in the first example. As I mentioned in the beginning of this tutorial, there are a lot of different ways to side chain within FL Studio. I've tried pretty much all of them and this is my personal preferred way to do things. This is how I teach my students how to do side chaining. It's what I highly recommend that you do. It saves a lot of clicks, it's very streamlined, and it gives you the most flexibility as far as being able to actually shape your sidechain sound and get the perfect amount of sidechain that you want. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now, I'm doing tutorials about once a week, and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday, so keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website 
at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.